not be able to stay home, brother. You will not be able to plug in, turn on, and cop out. You will not be able to lose yourself on stag and skip out for beer during commercials because the revolution will not be televised. The revolution will not be televised. The revolution will not be brought to you by Xerox. And... Now, the idea of a level playing field, I mean, I think to some extent, that is what we are all looking for. How to create a level playing field in terms of uh, access to, uh, to media in this country. So does, uh, do people like us who want to portray uh, an alternative voice actually have access to mainstream media? And here perhaps I'm talking more about broadcast media, television, radio. Look at programming on TV and, and radio. When was the last time you saw a program or an advertisement portraying a non-government political party? Or, ask yourself, when was the last time you saw a religious broadcast featuring a non-Muslim religion? The question is, if you haven't, why not? Even in 2004, when uh, Prime Minister Abdullah Badawi came in with a, a very good majority, at 64% of the popular vote, um, you know, you still had 36% of Malaysians who did not vote for the government. Where is their voice in the media? Today, of course, the popular vote for PM was 52%, run up. Okay, so now 48% of Malaysians did not vote for the government. Question, where is their voice uh, on RTM1? And RTM2. You compare that, for example, with other countries where the broadcast system takes public money. For example, in England with the BBC, it takes license money from everybody who owns a television. Right? And the BBC's charter right, entrenches and consolidates neutrality. They are not meant to favour the government of the day. They have to present a balanced uh, viewpoint. So you will see, for example, whenever they interview uh, a, a government MP, they will always, always uh, interview someone from the opposition to get the other side of uh, the argument. Yes, uh, I represent the Malaysian Bar in some of the FTA negotiations that are going on, free trade agreement negotiations that are going on. And it's very interesting because uh, there will come a time, even when we do sign FTAs, where uh, it's not inconceivable that foreign companies will want to come and will want to uh, set up broadcast services in this country. Right? And under, if you look at a standard US FTA, not one that we're negotiating because that's private and confidential, I can't tell you anything about it, but look at some of the ones that have already been signed and you will see uh, things like uh, commitments uh, to, uh, to an open and transparent transparent process of application. If there's going to be a, a time frame for uh, the application, it has to be set out. Uh, the, the information that you need to submit has to be set out, time frames are there. If you get rejected, there must be a clear process of appeal. There must be reasons given for um, for rejection and, and, and things like that. So, you know, it's, it's going to be really ironic that we will not be able in this country to push for the opening of uh, these kinds of processes. But when you sign an FTA, it will come from the other side because they will be forced, the uh, government will be forced to open this up on pain of being sued uh, at the WTO for breach of international commitments. Um, so, you know, that's, that's, if that's the way it has to be, well, you know, it's, it's going to be very embarrassing. Should we not? open up ourselves first and allow us to dictate that pace of change and transformation rather than we have to succumb to uh, foreign, uh, uh, well, foreign threat of, uh, of, of litigation. I also say that, unfortunately, journalists also have to step up, step up to the plate. Uh, I mean, the, the parallel argument is this, you know, I, I mean, I'm a lawyer and you all know about issues of judges and things like that. And really, if all the judicial reforms are put into place, we will still have an ineffective system if the judges themselves are not brave enough to actually take advantage of the freedoms and the independence that has actually been given to them. 
Now the question is, how do you defend the media? Um, I think it's high time that we move out of the traditional method for defending the media, uh, which is often isolated and on a case-by-case -case basis. So for example, if media outlet or, or media A is soon, then it's media A's problem, media B, C, D, E, and everyone else will not get involved. And I think that is the traditional method. I think we, as we move forward, um, we cannot let media outlets be defended in isolation. My argument is that there should be a concerted effort to defend the media from a total point of view. Uh, this, of course, would send a very strong message to the state. It would send a strong message to any authority whenever they make policy decisions, so whether they, 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 they take into account any issue that may affect the media, they would have to think twice. Okay, if I do it, what would the repercussions be? You see, when one talks about media defense, uh, one also talks about media reform. Uh, media defense and media protection must not be viewed as carte blanche for writing anything and everything. Uh, it's about striking the balance. Uh, I think Andrew touched about responsible journalism. And as well as the public's right to know and access to um, information. I think I can draw no further inspiration than, than Article 19 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which promotes the right to freedom of expression and of course uh, freedom of information. More importantly, media defense will help protect against a culture of fear a culture of fear by alternative media to be bold, to be strong in, 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 in whatever they believe in, in, in whatever they write. The media defense is not, it's not really an idea. It requires a bit of work, it requires effort. The question is whether media outlets, whether even mainstream media or alternative media is willing to come forward and say, look, we will protect, and these are the parameters of our defense, and we are committed to this. If you have that, then you know, the freedom of press in this country is definitely a good step. Thank you. I, w I would definitely love that if I had the opportunity to, to one day stand in front of everyone of you and say that today in the parliament we successfully we have successfully passed the bill, freedom of information bill. But I believe from what I mentioned above, uh, everyone of you would agree with me. To say that we can pass the bill eventually in the parliament is still too early. <laughs> It's pretty much it for, for us to say that. However, I don't think we, we should be very discouraged or feel very disappointed as well. Because the history actually has shown us that in the past, some new legislation actually eventually will be passed after years of researches and lobbying. So I think what we need to do from now on is, of course, as a member of parliament, I will continue to uh, push for it in parliament. But as a society, we are not. I think there's very much that we can do as well. There are a lot we can do. If we manage to run a few campaigns in, in, a, in the whole whole country, we can raise awareness about the freedom, how important this view is, or how important for us to have freedom of information. And just hopefully in the following few years, we can work towards a country where we can have our right towards, in, right towards the information, right to access information guaranteed by the safety. The question is that I think uh, are our journalists prepared to free themselves? Because you control the media. Now, if you refuse to put all these things on the newspaper, the mass will not know. And how can we expect the BN feel the pressure? The nation. But last year, you see 50,000 people march on the streets of KL, and that changed, led to Hindra, and then eventually March 8. Now, are we going to see something happen on the front line of journalism and media? Uh, our bar council president said when lawyers walk, there's something wrong. So when are we going to see our journalists walk? Because there's something that's wrong with them. Will not be televised, will not be televised. The revolution will be no rerun, brothers. The revolution will be live.